deck uh, to Shopping for the Real You. And my name is Andrea Flammer. I am the author. Brigitte keeps telling me to show my book, so I'm going to. <laughs> I'm the author of this book, Shopping for the Real You. And I have a wonderful Facebook page uh, where I have all kinds of updates and information about fashion and style. And I want to tell you a little bit about Brigitte. Uh, if you've watched our series, if you've been following it, uh, you know a lot about her. But for those of you for whom this is the first time, Brigitte is a former model and uh, born in Germany. She uh, lived in France and grew up in Australia and moved to New York and uh, had a wonderful life there where she owned a boutique and she also uh, did a fabric design. And in her, after she sold her company in her retirement, she's been working, doing volunteer work for a wonderful organization in New York called Bottomless Closet. And that's where uh, they, off, they work with women who are re-entering the workforce. Is that right, Brigitte? That's right. Yeah. right. So these, these could be women who have been homeless, who have been abused, who are just uh, formerly incarcerated, and they bring them into, this, into their shop and they give them a whole gorgeous outfit, top to bottom, shoes, accessories, mm -hmm. the whole outfit, so that they can go on a job interview. And when they get the job, then they get, what is it, three more outfits, is it? Three more. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just fabulous. I love this idea. I hope it spreads across the country. <laughs> so, all right. So I want to welcome you again. And I want to talk about her wonderful book, which is called Living Longer, Living Well. And Brigitte is the embodiment of Living Longer, Living Well. But the book is so charming and so entertaining. And there's so much good information in there. So I highly encourage you to get it. So today, Brigitte, we're going to talk about... Uh, we're going to cover a lot of subjects, but we're going to start with the whole concept of uh, what our clothes say about us. And I want to start with an anecdote of something that happened the day before yesterday. Um, I was going, I was just coming out of a shop that I go to. There's a place where I live uh, where they uh, have prepared meals that you order and then you pick up during the week and they're all organic they're all natural they're they're uh, even more than that they're very digestible and they're not cheap but they're very wonderful so I was leaving there and as I was leaving there were two women standing outside um, maybe they were a couple of years older than I maybe maybe not even and one of them uh, was I, I guess if I would describe her I would say she's probably like um, you know, was a hippie in our youth. But, and she, she had beautiful, uh, delicate bone structure. She was small, she was not large, but she was wearing clothes that looked like they were about two sizes too big for her. And they were completely wrinkled. And she looked like she hadn't combed her hair in, in a week or two. And she and her friend were talking very animatedly. She was not a homeless person, clearly. Um, and she seemed very self-possessed and extremely comfortable. And I felt so conflicted because because of the work that you and I do, <laughs> uh, on one hand, I felt, I need to talk to this one. We need to help her. On the other hand, I actually kind of admired the gutsiness of caring so little. <laughs> I mean, she was owning it, but it was, I, I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> Well, I, I think you can admire her gutsiness, but I don't think you should admire her otherwise, because she clearly was telling herself and the world, I don't care. And that is not a good thing to do, when, especially when we get older and, you know, so I think she was, um, maybe she was angry at the world, maybe she had another issue that she actually thought that she can do this, yeah. But I don't think that if you really asked her and went down deep, that she felt very good about herself. It did not show confidence or uh, that she liked herself or that she even respected herself. So I think we should avoid trying to be that way. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I agree with you totally. I really do think that, you know, there's a tendency for, for women as they get older at, at a certain point to just let go. And I understand that. Um, but I know, I mean, <laughs> I shared with you before, before this, and I'll tell everybody else, I stared at the video screen too long yesterday and gave myself a bit of a migraine. So I didn't sleep well. 
But you look well. <laughs> but when I got dressed and looked in the mirror and looked at myself and said, oh, you look okay, <laughs> then suddenly yeah. I felt better. Right, right. But that, that's the whole thing. And I think that people talk about, I don't care, and it doesn't matter how you look. They're really um, missing a big thing, and that is feeling good about themselves. And you can still feel good about yourself. And you make that little effort to, like you said, you know, do your hair, put your makeup. It makes a difference, yeah. And I think they are doing themselves out of a, a happier life, if you, if you know what I mean. And I think... You, I, I, it is a little work, I know, and it gets a little more work the older we get. <laughs> it yeah. takes a little longer, but it's worth it in the end because we feel good about ourselves. Yeah, because we do it for ourselves first and oh, foremost, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, and all is said and done, you really don't want other people to think about um, yourself as you thought about that lady, you see. That was not a positive um, observation you made there, you know. I mean, and you don't want other people to, to look at you and, and think similar things. You really don't, yeah. yeah. And, and then you, you look well, you know, they can't, they, they won't, you know, and they, they will respect you more. And, and that's important, I think. <laughs> I think that's true. I think that's true. I mean, why do first impressions matter so much um uh first of all you if you think back of the people you met even years ago you always remember what they looked like on that first time you met them that's true yes. and now men get a little confused they think you wore a red dress when you really it was a blue dress but they still remember also or you know how you looked and of course uh, you know they, they liked what they saw but i mean we uh, do remember how somebody looked uh, when we met them and i think that's uh, that's just something we should think of, yeah, and, and it stays with you all through the years, yeah. Oh, when I met her, you often um, hear people say that, oh, I met her there and there, and you know, she was wearing this beautiful dress, and she looked absolutely this way or that way, and it's a nice thing, you know, yeah. instead of, oh my God, she really looked a mess, but the next time she looked better, I mean, that's not what you want. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have a chance to take back a first impression. Oh, all right. well, you can change somebody's opinion of you over time, but that first impression says a lot. It does, you know. It, it basically describes you in a way, you know, how you like yourself, how much confidence you have, how you want to, uh, other people to see you. It's, it's for yourself and it's also for the others. It, it's just a win-win situ win situation for everybody, I think, mm -hmm. when you look at this. Yeah, I agree. So if we want to be seen as, um, uh, well, let's talk about being well-dressed. Uh, what are some of the important items that we should have in the best quality? I mean, I know you can, you can buy things at all different price levels, but which are the yeah. things that we should have at the best quality to look well-dressed? Basically, you know, like they always say, it's um, uh, the uh, handbag, shoes, a scarf, and I think the most important thing, which is not really for sale in a store, but yes, it is for sale in a way, is your hair. Uh, and people see your head first. And never mind what happens further down. It's your hair that is, uh, you know, so that's why I always say have a haircut regularly. Have the hairdresser do something. I mean, I know women who say very proudly, oh, I don't need a hairdresser. I do it myself all the time. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be rude, but I feel like saying it shows, you know. You, you need a, a professional hand from time to time. So I think on the things which are important, it is really your hair. And then if you have a good bag, the shoes becomes a little marginal today because so many people wear sneakers. But even there, <laughs> yeah, I but, but even there, you can have very, very fashionable sneakers which don't look just like an old pair of sneakers. And even there, you know, the shoes are still very important. And then, of course, the handbag always is a sign of well dressed. But if I can say something, I think more important than even those things I mentioned is the care how you take care of yourself. And the French have a wonderful word, they say, uh, somebody is soigné, which translates into English, cared for, neat, tidy, well-groomed. Soigné. Um, soigné, yeah. And it, it oh, just okay. it creates a whole picture. If you see somebody who is soigné, you know, they take care of everything about them. And I think that's so, so, so important because mm. Uh, also, being well taken care of and well groomed, it hides a lot, a lot of sins, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I never forget that there was an interview with Anthony Quinn once, and he said we were very, very poor. You know, he was playing so by the Greek. Uh, he said we were very poor when we when I grew up. But he said when we went to church on Sunday, we had on washed uh, breasts and pants and shirt, and we were very good at hiding our poverty. 
So that's what I say. When you are taking care of yourself, you can hide an awful lot of things. Yeah. Right. Uh, for example, if you pay attention to what type of clothes you buy, nobody sees that um, that bulge you have in the middle. You see, but uh, that is something that really fascinates me. You walk around, and how many women absolutely don't care that they have this big thing here? Yeah, and it's <laughs> prominent because they wear very tight things, you know. And, and if you care a little bit, and you pay attention to yourself. There are so many beautiful tops out there, loose tops, which you, you don't have to have this thing sticking out there. But it seems like they don't care. Yeah. So I think that taking care of what you wear is so important and, and and like I said it hides an awful lot of sins yeah, <laughs> uh, in every which way uh, so you know it's the clothes it's the hair it's your hands it's uh, it's everything yeah again it takes a little work but it is worth it and especially when we get older we have often a little more time you know we don't have to rush out from nine to five somewhere so let's put this extra time we have towards ourselves and, and making ourselves feel good about it Oh, <laughs> I love that. You know, you're talking about the, the go to church outfit. I think um, one of the things I've noticed from people is I, and I, I wrote this in my book, they have certain outfits that they call um, their someday best. You know, we talk about the Sunday best. They call it okay. their someday best. And they leave it in the closet and they never wear it. And, you know, I, 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 why not wear it today? <laughs> well, I, it's, this it's is a, someday. I think it's a mindset from very, very far back. I mean, I remember my grandparents, they had things. They only wore on Sundays. They didn't go to church so much, but still, it was a Sunday out. <laughs> <It's> Sunday. <laughs> and they wore Sundays, yeah. And my grandmother used to say, uh, you know, you can't look, you can't wear your best every day. That was her, her excuse for not wearing it another time, yeah. Uh, also, they had the same outfit for years. It, it, you know, there was always the Sunday outfit, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that maybe they, the people who do this, just think of the church and this outfit being very special and being having to be kept for that you see it, it must give them some kind of comfort wearing that to church yeah uh, so maybe that's the explanation <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, you know i mean why not why not see glory every day and dress for it every day that's kind of the way i, I think about it so yeah, but when you go to the supermarket you dress a little different than when you go to church you know, there, there is a difference there, you see. Mm -hmm. So maybe on Sundays when they go to church, they really wear their best to look their best for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that could be true, right? <laughs> that's mean if you wear a different outfit for the supermarket during the week, you can't look as good. <laughs> no, <right>? that's true. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting on airs. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's let's talk about. Um, well, we we talked about the details. Um, what the 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 state of your clothes look like. You know, it, oh. you want to take care of the details. You know, what I, what, the, what does the state of your clothes say about about you? Like well, again, shoes. you know, I mean, um, uh, I mean, boys have a little bit. Um, how shall I say? An easier way. I remember we had somebody, a young man, visiting, and I washed his shirt and. Then I was going to iron it, and he tore it away from me. And he said, "Oh my God, don't iron that shirt." He said, "That's not the look, you see." But for young boys, that passes, you know. Oh. For us, I mean, just put on a shirt that's totally crumbled, and and then one that is ironed. And look how much better the ironed one looks, you know. Mm -hmm. It says you are not again, yet you're not taking care of yourself, you know. Uh, and here and there, I mean, we all maybe when you clean, you work in the garden or so forth, you don't you know, on your shirt before, but on the whole, I think an iron shirt, a, a clothes which are taken care of, look better on you, yeah, than something that's not in good condition, but in this way, yeah. yeah. So, and, and, and this has nothing to do with how expensive the clothes were, you see. I mean, an iron shirt is an iron shirt, and if it was $20 or if it was $80, yeah. So it's just that little extra effort again uh, that, you know, will make the difference. Uh, and I think one of the things that people tend to forget about is just, we've, we, we had a whole episode about this, is about shoes, but it's yeah. very important to keep your shoes looking good. Yes, it is. But again, so many people wear sneakers today, you know, mm -hmm. and, but even those can be put in the washing machine and can be clean. And look at how many people have absolutely wear dirty sneakers. Maybe they think it goes with the look, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I mean, I have nothing against sneakers, but throw them in the washing machine. It's so easy today, you know. Also, 
the care of things is so easy compared to years before. I mean, sneakers, you could never wash them before. Now, I mean, for a long time already, you just throw them in the washing machine, they come out looking really great. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah, so, you know, shoes should be clean, you're right, whatever they are. <laughs> so, um, let, let's, let's go back just a little bit and talk um, about why we wear the clothes that we love the most. I think because instinctively we know that they suit us the best. Mm -hmm. It's not something we think about or we, you know, we don't put something on and say, oh, this really looks better than something else. I think it's because we see that because I think people know what they look good in. They, because all the fashion and all the advice we get confuses people very often. So they don't feel sure anymore that they know what looks good on them. And if you wear the same sweater or the same a lot, that means you feel comfortable in it and you feel comfortable in it because you look good in it. Mm -hmm. So I think somebody should look at their wardrobe and pick out the pieces that they wear all the time. And mm. that is basically their style then too. Talking about what style somebody has, yeah. You gravitate to the things which make you feel good and which you look good in. Yeah, so. I, I think that's true. Um, yeah. I think I think I read that. I mean, it's like some high percentage of people wear this, this they they wear the same things over and over, and they may have a huge closet, but there are certain things they just wear over and over. Okay. And unless one day you stop and you actually look at those pieces and say, "This is my style," you will always buy the other things because you're not you're not in your mind sticking to this certain look, you see. Because if you are a conservative person, one day you're going to get carried away and you buy something frilly. Uh, it's, it's not you and then you, just, right. you when you put it on you think oh this doesn't look right you put it back in the cupboard you see mm -hmm. and uh, so I think uh, you should take the pieces out that you wear all the time and look at them and that's you yeah. and it's instinctive it's not something you mentally have figured out it's an instinct that you have that you feel very good in this brown jacket and in whatever it is and that's why you keep wearing it yeah and um, so that uh, and all the other things they just hang there yeah and I think you just them. answered my next question. I was going to ask you what makes these things different from the rest, but I think, yeah. yeah. That's what makes them different, you see, and, uh, and I think they should be separated, and then when you go out shopping the next time, remember those, remember that look, mm -hmm. and don't let your girlfriend say, oh, I think the florals look lovely on you. Mm -hmm. No, they don't when you don't wear florals, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, yeah. You're not having florals, um, you're not wearing florals because you don't feel comfortable in them. It's not your style. So yeah, yeah them you see and and uh, the advice of girlfriends and so forth be very careful of that because you yeah. feel you know how you feel in something and that's important you know right. uh, and you even look good in it but it, the other thing is looking good and feeling good should go together mm -hmm. you have to feel good in something and look good in something mm -hmm. Not one or the other. <laughs> so um <clears throat> so now so well we wear the things that we love most Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of other things in our closet. And mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned to me something about how understanding that can help you clean out your closet. How is I, that? How is that? Well, first of all, if you bought that floral dress two years ago when you were shopping with your girlfriend and you have only worn it once and then you just put it over there, uh, look at it again and get it out of there. Because first of all, looking at it again, you feel always it reminds you again, unconsciously, that you made a mistake that day, mm -hmm. that you spent the money on something that's not serving you well. Uh, so if you have trouble getting rid of it, uh, put it on the side and then try and look around uh, where you could give it, to whom you could give it that it would help them, you see. Because you don't, nobody wants just to throw something out they paid for. And, uh, you know, so I think it's a church, it's, a, it's an organization, it's, it's even a girlfriend, you know, the girlfriend right. who said you look wonderful in that dress, say to her, listen, you, you know, I know you said I look great, I've never worn it, would you like it, you know, find a place where it can be useful, yeah. that will help you to clean out your wardrobe, I think, yeah. and also it will prevent you from spend doing this again and spending the money on something uh, that you're not wearing later on. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think clothing is much more psychological than we ever uh, oh, think. The absolutely. Fashion world, the fashion world makes us believe, you know, this is in and that is out and you should do this. But it's so personal and so psychological for, for everybody that, you know, we, we should go more with our instincts, our gut feeling and, mm. and not so much what maybe is shown in Bazaar or what the latest fashion is dictating to us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
I was going to say, or, or what the saleswoman is trying to push on you, but lately I found that there aren't many active salespeople no, in no. stores. <laughs> You're on your own unless you bring a friend. And that, as you said, that can be tricky. Um, well, okay, so that's true, but it's still it's still difficult to get rid of some of these things, you know, I mean, why, you said it's psychological, but um, why is it difficult to get rid of the things that, that we don't wear? Uh, what I started to do, I tried to get them out of my everyday wardrobe. You see, uh, that, that I have another place where I put these things. And then I kind of forget about them, you see, and that makes it easier to give away too. Yeah, oh. when you don't see them all the time, you see them hanging there and oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so take them out, what you don't wear, take it out, put it in another closet mm -hmm. and forget about it. And you'll be surprised in six months, you didn't even know you had that anymore, you see. And then you can say, no, it's really time. Let somebody let else enjoy this, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and that will, will make it easier. And also that having only in front of you what you wear all the time will uh, make you more aware of what you should buy when you go shopping the next time. You know, you're not going to get another floral dress because there's mm -hmm. that other one still hanging on, you know, or uh -huh. whatever you didn't like. So this will indicate to you, this is my look and this is what I have to buy. Uh, you know? This is so true. A, a, a friend of mine had a, um, uh, an analyst come to her house and help her clear uh -huh. out her closet. Yeah. And she said, I, she said it, it <laughs> this is kind of odd to say, she said, there was a little bit of grief that went with it because I was letting go of a lot of things and I'm not buying so much anymore, but I love everything that I have. Yes, and, and the advantage of that is by buying less that you can buy better quality and better quality you will love for a long time because it yeah. always will look good on you. Yeah. Now there is a little bit of grief uh, because you, you see you must think also, uh, you blame yourself in a way. Why did I buy that if I didn't wear it? You see there's grief and there's guilt yeah? because you know when you bought that, that you shouldn't have bought it because you never wear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the guilt and the grief kind of go together and you <laughs> and you can avoid that. <laughs> you can avoid that if you get first rid of the guilt by putting it in another closet and then the grief, you know, yeah. comes, it goes away automatically. Yeah. The minute you get rid of those things. Yeah. <laughs> and it ends up saving you money. It does. It definitely does. Yeah. And, and uh, I mean, uh, like you, I, or like everybody, I wear a certain amount of things all the time and, and the rest is there, you know, but now the summer and winter, of course you separate, you know, this is a little different. I mean, you don't get rid of summer clothes. I, uh, you, you separate your wardrobe. Yeah. For in the seasons. Yeah. I, I mean, you put the summer clothes aside. Um, yeah. 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 And then that, that is for example, a very good ex exercise. When you get them out next summer, you look at some of these things and think, really? Do I still have this thing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, and that makes it easier to get rid of it too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, put it, I put it away thinking, well, you never know. Let's see when next summer comes. So the next summer comes and I think, oh, really? This thing again? No. Now it has to go. And that makes you sure. Uh, by keeping it a little bit, again, you haven't seen it in, in the winter. And then when it comes out, you say, oh, I really don't want this. You see, I, I, and it makes you it frees you up to give this thing away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there's something wonderful about having space in your closet, you know, <laughs> but I think it, it, it's better for the clothes too, you know, to yeah. not be all crammed and packed yeah. in like yeah. that. But yeah. Some who are shopaholics, you know, they're, they're, they're out there. They always say, when I have space in my wardrobe, I'm so happy because that allows me to go out and shop again. You know? Oh, that's true. <laughs> And that's for two, but it couldn't be the reason to go out and shop again, you know. As we talked previously, you have to take inventory, and if you have three pair of jeans, you don't need a fourth pair unless you get rid of one, yeah. And uh, so there is um, a quantity question here too, yeah. And it, it's a job. It's, it's very uh, systematic. It's not just a lot of people take clothes like something that just happens. No, it's, it's very organized and very systematic that you should look at this uh, because it does affect your purse in the end. Mm. You know, I mean, you, you buy too much. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, again, be careful of the sales because uh, it's hard to resist something that's hard, very much reduced, but it's not your style. You know, I mean, for example, if I take myself, uh, I'm not a frilly style. I'm not a lace style. I love anything made in lace. I love frilly things. But on me, 
it's horrible here. Yeah, it's just yeah. not me. So yeah. everybody has a look, you know, and and I think they should try and find it. And it, the answer is in those clothes they wear all the time. Yeah, I think it's one thing to really appreciate what somebody else, you know, buys. It's another thing to to try to make it your own when it's it's not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love, I see other girls in, in lace tops and so on. I think they look wonderful. Well, I, I don't. I always feel like I'm wearing my grandmother's um, a curtain or something. I, I just don't feel comfortable, and I don't know why. But I don't have to find out why. It's yeah. just not suiting me. So, I, you know, I don't That's, even <laughs> consider I, it. I loved what, what Drew Barrymore said. Uh, she was talking about her own daughter, and she said, um, I, you know, she tries to model as a person for her and she said well, I, I do look at what other people wear but I take inspiration not imitation yes that's very very interesting yeah yeah I mean I think looking at other people tells us more how to put things together often than oh, what they yeah. wear yeah yeah all of a sudden you see that top or that color with that color and you think oh my god this works you see mm -hmm. you go you try it yeah mm -hmm. so the inspiration is is also for how people wear things and what mm -hmm. they put together. Mm -hmm. Very good point, you know, and, and for that we can look at others and what they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, this is all very good advice. <laughs> um, so, oh, Brigitte, I, I, I want to ask you, you mentioned something about a, um, a workshop that you just did and you were working with um, older women, 60s and 70s. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, it was very interesting. I mean, the ladies who were in their 60s, they were all very positive, and uh, yes, and, and I must say, also they looked nice. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they had, their hair was nice, and, and you see, when you meet somebody like that who is enthusiastic about this subject, they, they're most of the time doing it already, you know, and they uh -huh. just feel good that they are being told, I'm doing the right thing. I mean, not directly to them, but you know in the workshop and they were very uh, happy and and you know and we could they had questions we could discuss it the women who were i would say maybe 75 uh i felt like handing out combs like you did to that lady <laughs> I, I had the feeling they hadn't combed their hair you know mm -hmm. and they kind of looked at everything we said and discussed like it was too late for them you oh know? that's so sad that is so sad. You, you know? mean they felt that it was too late for them? Yeah, I or? asked one lady and I said, um, uh, is this useful, uh, you know, this workshop for you? And she said, why not really anymore? She said, because I, I, I'm too far gone. And I don't think anybody's ever too far gone. I mean, no. I became 89 and she looked nice to the uh, to their last day. Yeah. Uh, so I, it's very sad to see that. Uh, do, you, do you think that's an American thing? Because I don't think European women feel that way. Well, European women are, are kind of different, um, I think, in the sense of they take very good care of themselves. Maybe they're not as fashionable, you know, but I don't think they say I'm, I'm too old. Like I said, my grandmother, she is not a fashion person, but I mean, she would not open the door till her last day without having combed her hair and put a little bit of lipstick. And then she had a little powder thing. She would powder her nose. She would never open the door until uh, till she was very old, uh, till, her, till the end, because you never know, you know, uh, no, I think it's very much, um, uh, they give up. Maybe mm -hmm. it comes also from our society, which pushes down youth yeah. and beauty, mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. throat. I mean, sometimes, you know, you see somebody and you think to yourself, how can anybody be that perfect? You know what I'm saying? I mean, the models are in, in the magazines or on television, long legs, beautiful, everything is beautiful about them. And you look at that and you think, Joao, how can, it, how can she be that perfect? So maybe this constant reminder of that you should be young, that you should be good looking, that you should be fashionable, intimidates some women and they say, ah, let it go. That could be one of the reasons, you know. And I, I don't even think they're that perfect too. Uh, you know, there's all that Photoshop and, no, I know. <laughs> but I know. you can show up as the best version of yourself. Yes, yes. I think you can be the best of yourself at any time, you know. Mm -hmm. But these women had just given up. She said, oh, it's too late for me. And I said, it's not, you know. Oh, yes. You see, she had convinced herself. Now, maybe she didn't want to make the effort. That's possible too. Yeah. Or maybe she was alone and she thinks nobody looks. Well, that's not true because you go to the supermarket and somebody says, oh, you, your hair is nice or your dress is nice. That's nice, you know, and, and, and it lifts somebody up. But yes, if it you, does. If, if you don't make the effort, you know, 
then uh, you you feel left behind and you feel like there's yeah. nothing else to do anymore you know uh, it was kind of sad to hear but the younger women they were all you know and, and they looked at you see yeah. so when somebody embraces something it usually is confirmed by the way they look and what they do hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so I think that's, that's true. That's an indication. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and the other thing is, I think uh, while we talk about that, you have to accept yourself also. Uh, we can't look like that girl I just talked about. But we we can say, well, I'm a little heavier. I have to get different clothes instead of saying, oh, I'm too fat. I have to lose weight, which we most of the time don't. You know, mm -hmm. we start mm -hmm. a visit and right. we don't. Right. And right. we feel bad about ourselves all that time because we didn't lose the weight and we're not slim. Accept yourself and get a bigger size. You know? Exactly. Get a exactly. different size. Again, it doesn't um, stop you from looking nice. You know. That's right. Some of the most fashionable women I know are large women. Yeah, and, and you know whatever it is, or maybe um, I mean I, I I work with somebody, and I, I mean I'm I'm so appalled sometimes. She has the worst legs in the world. I mean heavy, 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 and otherwise she's not a bad looking person. She always wears mini skirts, yeah. and I feel like walking up to her and say, "Can you wear pants, please?" You know, because she's tall and otherwise or oh, fine. Yeah. So if she wore a pantsuit, for example, you know that would be the answer. But no, maybe she has accepted herself so well that she thinks that's all right. I don't know. But a full-length mirror would show her that. And again, you don't have to feel bad about it. Just right. Get the right. right clothes. You know, it, it's it's awesome. a matter, you know, the song accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. I think it's more that than anything else. It's not, it's not an indictment against any body part. It's just that. No, it's an acceptance of yourself, right. you know. And I think when you accept something, as with everything else, that's when you can do something about it. But you have to that's first true. say, you know, I'm not a size um, eight, you know. I'm size 14, and um, you know, it's all we have to work with that. And yeah. when you do this, it, it never even comes up as a negative, you know, when you say, Well, I'm size 14, you know, what have you got in size 14 that looks nice on me? And then you don't feel bad, and nobody else thinks you don't look nice. That's right. So That's it's right. really, um, uh, you know, uh, so I mean, in the end, when all is said and done, I've just written this down. When we get older, unfortunately, we don't get prettier. Mm. So the extra care is there's extra care needed uh, to make up for that. Yeah, to uh, just uh, and it takes longer. The other day, my um, daughter-in-law came and I said, "I'm not ready yet." I said, "You know, it takes a little longer now." Oh, she said, "Don't say that." I said, "Oh, please." I said, "I know it takes a little longer." You know, and also maybe we we a little slower. I don't know what it is, but you know, before, uh, yeah, I mean, you walked out of the door. It was in a hurry. Now it's your hair, your makeup, and sometimes even getting dressed. You, you try two, three things, and you say, oh, no, not this or that. So give yourself a little more time. And again, accept that. Mm -hmm. Don't say, oh, my God, I don't look like when I was 18. No, we don't. <laughs> you know? yeah. What did somebody say? When you're 18, you can wear a brown table bag over your head, and you look nice. <laughs> yeah. and That's good. Very good advice. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I just observed that it's true. I think when women get into their 70s, that it, they're kind of like confused of what's coming next. But I've noticed that some women, when they hit their 80s, yeah. start dressing up again. <laughs> that's, that's true. I, that I is love true. it. I noticed that too. I, I love that too. You know, and uh, uh, and I think it, it's nice. And and also we have such a choice today of clothing. You see, in the years ago, uh, there was oh. maybe not as much for us or uh, for older women than there is now. I mean, you go to a place like Chico. I don't know right. if you have place um, it's online they have the loveliest things for you know they they're younger young looking but not youngish you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying so uh, you can get a very nice pantsuit for a casual and it's nice so that's right again, there's no excuse there's no excuse all that when we uh, uh, summarize it it takes time and an effort and one and the, the wish to make that effort to, right. to the wish to, to do look nice, yeah? And, you know, if you, the, the thing is, if you respect yourself and you like yourself and you look good, you will be confident, regardless of your age. And yeah. that is another thing, yeah? Because it, it, we can yeah. use clothes and how we look uh, to give us confidence at any age. Yeah, I completely agree. 
This has been wonderful. This has been very <laughs> enlightening. And uh, it's always a pleasure to talk with you, Brigida. I want to remind everybody else, the book is called Living Longer, Living Well. And it's got a, a lot of fashion advice, um, but it's got a lot of advice about just um, life, you know, how to deal with these issues that come up for all of us. And um, I highly recommend it. Living Longer, Living Well. The author is Brigitte Niosh. And I am Andrea Flammer, the author of Shopping for the Real You. Good Please job. join us again. Uh, check out uh, my YouTube uh, channel because we have all of our interviews with Brigitte up. And I think you're going to enjoy them. So until next time, and we're going to, there will be a next time. Uh, I want to very much thank my guest, Brigitte Niosh. Thanks so much, Brigitte. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.